Hollywood icon son opens up about his parents. Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall are one of Hollywood's most iconic film couples. The duo appeared on screen together on multiple occasions and met while shooting a film together. Unfortunately, their marriage didn't last. Bacall was just in her early 30s when her spouse died. The love story of Bogart and Bacall is famous. Her children, who were very little when their father died, recognized the couple's strong bond. While the two screen legends are no longer alive, their son has some vivid recollections of their time together that he's now shared with the world. Humphrey and Bacall fell in love on set and knew they wanted a family. In 1944, Bogart and Lauren Bacall collaborated for the first time. Sparks ignited when the two featured in the film To Have and Have Not. A year later, the couple married at Malabar Farms in Lucas, Ohio. Bogart's close buddy, Pulitzer Prize-winning novelist Louis Bromfield, owned the house. After they married, the couple continued to collaborate on projects. They appeared in The Big Sleep, shown here, Dark Passage, and Key Largo. On January 6, 1949, when Bogart was filming Tokyo Joe, their son Stephen was born. Bogart and Bacall had a 25-year age difference, which made it risque. Bogart was born in New York City on Christmas Day, 1899. Lauren Bacall, his future wife, was born in the Bronx, New York City in 1924. She rose to prominence in Hollywood due to her seductive appearance and unusual voice. Their age disparity was certain a topic of conversation in social circles at the time. Bacall was concerned about raising a family that would stand the test of time because she was so much younger. Not to mention Bogart's marriage, so you surely turn heads. Despite their age gap, they knew they'd have children. Their son and daughter grew up with some pretty famous neighbors. Bogart and Bacall's first child was Stephen. He was called after a character in the film to have and have not, which reunited the two great figures. Stephen grew up in the same neighborhood as Liza Minnelli and Judy Garland. He then worked as a documentary filmmaker, writer, and news producer. Stephen and his wife live in Naples, Florida with their three adult children. Leslie Howard Bogart, his sister, was born in 1952. She was named after one of Bogart's buddies who co-starred in The Petrified Forest with him. Bogart was very proud of his son. Stephen was a small child when his father died, and Bogart spent a lot of time working. But other memories remain vivid for Stephen, notably those involving Bogart's yacht, the Santana. He would take me down to the Santana, Stephen said. Eventually, when I learned to swim, we would go out on the boat. I recall traveling to Catalina Island and swimming back to the Santana. I made it, and Dad was really happy of me because he knew I could swim. That type of self-esteem lingers with you. Bogart's lifestyle shortened his life. Bogart became quite unwell a few years after his 10-year wedding anniversary, owing primarily to his smoking and drinking habits. In 1956, Bacall persuaded him to seek medical attention, and the actor was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. Doctors then removed his whole esophagus, two lymph nodes, and a rib. Unfortunately, neither the operation nor chemotherapy improved Bogart's condition. He fought cancer for about a year, but he was unable to prevail. In his final hours, he allegedly placed his hand on his wife's arm and said, Goodbye, kid, before passing away. Numerous Hollywood icons visited Bogart the day before he died and attended his funeral. Famous companions Frank Sinatra, Catherine Hepburn, and Spencer Tracy paid him a visit in January 1957 to pay their final goodbyes. Bogart died the next day. The actor was just 57 years old when he died. His physique had deteriorated to the point that he weighed just 80 pounds. Some of Hollywood's biggest stars, including Hepburn, Tracy, Judy Garland, future President Ronald Reagan, Betty Davis, Danny Kaye, Joan Fontaine, Marlene Dietrich, James Cagney, Errol Flynn, Gregory Peck, Gary Cooper, Billy Wilder, and Jack Warner attended his simple funeral. Stephen was shocked by the number of people at his father's funeral. When Stephen Bogart attended his father's funeral, he realized he was a significant character. Stephen was just eight years old when his father died. When my father died, there were 3,000 people I didn't know attending the funeral. 
Bogart told Fox News in 2019. I suspected something was amiss. There was very certainly was. Bogart was laid to rest with a beautiful remembrance. It was a charm bracelet with a little gold whistle attached. Bogart gave the jewelry to Pakal before they married, and it featured a really beautiful message connected to their first picture together, to have and have not. Life changed a lot for Stephen after his father's death. Bacall chose to leave California when his father died to mourn in England. In California, I had a pool home. Life was going well. And then there was a big change for us, Stephen continued. He went on to say that his mother gradually began putting herself first and doing things she'd always wanted to do, such as relocate to New York to be closer to her mother and work in theater plays. Bacall made sure her son was honest, just like his dad. Bacall married her second husband, actor Jason Robards, four years after Bogart died. Robards' drinking terminated the marriage in 1969. Throughout it all, Bogart was on Bacall's mind. She would talk about him all the time, Stephen remarked. It was almost like, what would your father think? Or your father believed in treating people properly. That's exactly what she wanted me to do. She wanted me to remember that he disliked lying. He wasn't lying. She used to hammer it into me all the time. Don't tell any lies. Tell the truth. That was significant. Stephen would never act because he couldn't compare to his parents. Children of actors are not unusual to work in the family industry, but Stephen had never been interested in following in the footsteps of Bogart or Bacall. When he was younger, he attempted acting, but it didn't work out. How do you compete with something like that, said Stephen. The parallels would have been obvious. No way, no how. Plus, I was terrible at it. In high school, I was in a few plays. I wasn't particularly excellent. It was impossible for me. I simply wasn't very good. Being someone else is not an easy thing to accomplish. Stephen carries on his father's legacy and tries to keep classic Hollywood alive. Stephen presently co-manages the Humphrey Bogart estate, which assists in the annual Bogart Film Festival. We try to do things that keep not only him, but classic Hollywood alive, Stephen explained. There are many great films now, but I believe there's still room for classic Hollywood. Bogart's Spirits is also distributed by the estate in collaboration with Rock Drinks. The actor enjoyed a variety of beverages, his favorites being gin and whiskey. Some of his favorite cocktails were martinis, which were made with gin in those days, gin and tonics, Manhattans, and old fashions, Stephen explained. Stephen Bogart never wanted to draw attention to himself. Stephen Bogart revealed to the Palm Beach Post that his parents' celebrity is sometimes too much for him. I just wanted people to like or dislike me for being who I was, he explained. He also stated that his mother, Lauren Bacall, did not enjoy all the attention. All of my friends are real people, he added. Not to say that movie stars aren't real, but you know what I mean. Did my mom enjoy it? No. Stephen further stated that he seldom divulged his last name until absolutely necessary. Bogart was sentimental and romantic, according to his daughter. Bogart regularly gifted emotional jewelry to his wife, a memory his daughter Leslie remembers. In reality, the actor carefully considered the presents he offered to Bacall. In 2015, Leslie told Harper's Bazaar that her father enjoyed carving lovely inscriptions on her mother's items. My mother always described my father, Humphrey Bogart, as being very sentimental and romantic, Leslie said. He frequently gave her lovely jewelry, almost every piece engraved with a sweet sentence or thought and his initials or name very romantic. Leslie Bogart grew up to instruct yoga. Leslie, like Stephen, had no ambition to emulate her parents' acting professions. She went on to become a nurse and a yoga instructor. She also married a yoga master, Eric Schiffman, who penned the best-selling book, Yoga, the Spirit and Practice of Moving into Stillness, and made the famous DVD, Yoga, Mind and Body. Leslie recalls her mother as humble and romantic, despite her accomplishments and wealth. Bacall was always grateful to the artists who helped her get to where she was. Leslie appears to have inherited her mother's tenacity. Bacall was a model and starred alongside Marilyn Monroe. Lauren Bacall was a model before dating Bogart. She began her acting career with roles in various romantic comedies, including 1953's How to Marry a Millionaire, starring Marilyn Monroe and Betty Grable and 1957's Designing Woman, starring Gregory Peck. 
Bacall also appeared in John Wayne's final picture, The Shootist, in 1976. She featured in numerous Broadway productions in the 1970s and received Tony Awards for Applause in 1970 and Woman of the Year in 1981. She was nominated for an Academy Award for The Mirror Has Two Faces in 1996. The couple's charm bracelet showed how much they loved each other. Bacall famously informs Bogart in the film, You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You simply press your lips together and blow. Even by today's standards, such cue is quite dangerous. The bracelet engraving stated, If you want anything, just whistle. The jewelry was evidently very important to the family, and Bacall wanted her husband to keep it with him even after he died. Bogart was cremated, and his ashes were placed in Glendale, California's Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery. Following his death, followers formed a bogey cult to honor the actor. Cult members lived in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Greenwich Village, New York, and France. Bogart and Bacall were very much in love and were good together, according to Stephen. When he wasn't creating films, Bogart preferred to spend time at home with his wife, Laura Bacall, and Stephen could tell how much they loved each other. He'd want to have dinner with her when he got home from work, Bogart recalled. In the 1950s, children were seen rather than heard. At least my mother and father had dinners with the adults, but they were madly in love, and they got along very well. They were a couple.